Welcome to Nashville and your 2014 FBLA National Leadership Conference. All year, your national leadership team has been putting excellence in action. Let's meet them, beginning with your Western Region Vice President from Oregon, Parker Snook. Next is your Southern Region Vice President from Arkansas, Rachel Ford. Welcome your North Central Region Vice President from Iowa, Rohan Agarwal. Next is your Mountain Plains Region Vice President from Oklahoma, Holland Gray. Let's hear it for your Eastern Region Vice President from Maryland, Natalie Tran. Next, your National Parliamentarian from New York, Adam Nisanoff. Welcome your National Treasurer from Connecticut, Jacob Gettinger. From New York, let's hear it for your National Secretary, Ken Pomerantz. And from Georgia, welcome your National President, Cole Simmons. Members and advisors, this is your FBLA National Leadership Team. Welcome to Nashville and our FBLA National Leadership Conference. This year, your national officer team challenged you to put excellence in action. I know that each of you already strives for excellence in all that you do, but this year, we asked you to do more than just achieve excellence. We asked you to put excellence in action. This year's chapters not only achieve new membership goals, you also put plans in place to retain your membership for next year. You didn't just reach a fundraising goal. Even better, you improved the life of an individual that benefited from the money that you raised. You didn't just help out a town with your one-day community service project. Even better, you instilled in others a sense of pride and community that will extend well beyond your years in FBLA. As we meet the leaders from our state associations, we are proud to highlight many business success stories where entrepreneurs accomplish their dreams by putting excellence in action. Within each of us is a tiny spark fil filled with ambition, initiative, and the courage to embrace new challenges. This drive and determination can lead us to excellence if we make the decision to take action. An inspiring story like that of Scott Harrison is a perfect example of this. Scott didn't like the fact that products like toothpaste had better marketing campaigns than life-saving causes. So he founded Charity Water, which brings clean drinking water to developing nations. Now funding nearly 4,000 water projects providing access to clean, safe drinking water for 1.8 million people in 19 countries. His goal now is to raise $2 billion to help 100 million people in the next 10 years. Excellence in action begins with just one spark and the passion to achieve your dreams. Let's meet the passionate leaders of the Southern region, beginning with our host state of Tennessee. As they join me on stage, help me thank our host committee members from Tennessee FBLA for their work in hosting this wonderful conference. <laughs> Stepping forward to receive a certificate of appreciation is Tennessee FBLA CTE specialist, Sarah Williams. Next, 
we recognize Tennessee FBLA State Committee member, Rita Young. We also thank Tennessee FBLA State Committee member, Connie Baggett. Let's hear it once more for Tennessee FBLA, our host of the 2014 National Leadership Conference. <laughs> we begin our parade with the members and advisors of the Southern Region. We begin the Parade of States with Alabama State President Nicholas Smith and outstanding local chapter advisor Robert Austin. From Arkansas, State President Matty Huber and outstanding local chapter advisor Angie Hudson. From Florida, State President Andy Alfonso and outstanding local chapter advisor Chris Borg. From Georgia, State President Cole Simmons and outstanding local chapter advisor Stephanie Mason. From Kentucky, State President Jacob Beckley and outstanding local chapter advisor, Sheena Weldon. From Louisiana, State President Kiana Meeks and outstanding local chapter advisor, Katricia McDowell. From Mississippi, State President Wesley Knott and outstanding local chapter advisor, Benita Ford. From North Carolina, State President Layla Terzik from South Carolina, State President Alyssa Koziarski and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Tammy Matthews. From Tennessee, State President Elizabeth Armstead and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Joe Bryan. From Virginia, State President Muhammad Ali and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Lynn White. And from West Virginia, State President Dusty Martin. The key to achieving excellence is leading by example. And Tom's founder, Blake Mykoski, is a wonderful example of blending commerce and compassion and changing lives for the better. After befriending children in an Argentine village, Blake noticed they didn't have adequate shoes to protect their feet. So he created a company that would match every pair of shoes purchased with a pair of new shoes for a child in need. His one-for-one one model was expanded to eyewear, and this year, Tom launched its recent venture called Roasting Company. With every bag of coffee you purchase, Tom's will provide one week of clean water to a person in need. What began as a simple idea has evolved into a powerful business model, helping children and communities around the world. I've been so proud of the community service provided by the members and advisors of the Western Region. Your ideas have created positive change for so many. I am proud to introduce our state pre presidents and outstanding local chapter advisors from the Western Region who put excellence into action. From Arizona, State President Anna Lee Boyle and outstanding local chapter advisor Julie Ellis. From California, State President Cameron Consarina and outstanding local chapter advisor, Lee Lara. From Nevada, outstanding local chapter advisor, Tiffany Williams. From Oregon, State President, Melody Lindorf, and outstanding local chapter advisor, Peggy Anthony. From Utah, State President, Tyler Bess, and outstanding local chapter advisor, Shauna Peterson. From Washington, State President Xenon Berkeley and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Adam Smith. Achieving excellence requires you to understand the importance of remaining relevant in our ever-changing environment. Jason Toes, a computer programmer, and Dustin Koopal, an eye doctor, saw a need to help people find the least expensive gas prices. So their website, gasbuddy.com, was born. When persuading drivers to log in and share prices was no longer convenient, 
They strengthened their relevance in the market by launching a mobile app for Android and iPhone users. Today, 6 million people have downloaded their apps. Their mobile presence combined with their website is building a larger customer base, all because of their understanding that relevance and convenience plays an important role in your success. Tonight, I am pleased to recognize the state leaders of the Eastern Region who worked hard this year to accomplish their goals while focusing on the relevance of FBLA as we achieved excellence in action. From Connecticut, State President Brittany Murphy. From District of Columbia, State President Shannon Matthews and outstanding local chapter advisor Joseph Tolerico. From Maryland, State President Tyler Graybill and outstanding local chapter advisor Gwen Barteld. From New Hampshire, State President Dennis Ruprecht. From New Jersey, State President Shirak Shada and outstanding local chapter advisor Ron Richter. From New York, State President Stephen Youssef. From Pennsylvania, State President Sam Kessler. From Puerto Rico, outstanding local chapter advisor Gisela Acevedo. From Rhode Island, State President Lauren Roquefort and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Renee Shaw. From U.S. Virgin Islands, State Vice President Jabari Alexander. From Vermont, State President Sidney Whipple and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Betsy Calhoun. And now, from the foreign chapters in our region, please welcome, from Haiti, Fritzlein Felix. The things you do the most are the things you do the best. Chris Zane of Zane Cycles is the experienced business. Whether it's selling bicycles in his storefront shop or filling orders for, store, for corporate rewards programs, he knows a successful business is about more than just selling. He got his start at age 12 fixing bikes in his garage and at 16 convinced his parents to take, help him take over the lease of a bike shop going out of business. In his first year, his total sales reached 56,000, and today his sales expect to bring in more than $21 million. Chris found a way to turn his passion for bike riding and repair into a multi-million dollar business. Ask yourself what you enjoy doing over and over and over again and how you might turn your passion into a successful venture like Chris. Pursuing excellence has been the passion of the members of the Mountain Plains region, and I am proud for you to meet the state presidents and outstanding local chapter advisors. From Colorado, State President Bailey Clear and outstanding local chapter advisor Sharon Adams. From Kansas, State President Sarah Meadery and outstanding local chapter advisor Dory Roth. From Nebraska, State President Cody McCain and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Susan Wellman. From North Dakota, State President Caleb Deshack and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Jessica Duvall. From Oklahoma, State President Kennedy Reynolds and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Alan Reynolds. From South Dakota, State President Christy Pond. From Texas, State President Maria Lewis Hudson and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor, Peggy Clayton. From Wyoming, State President Savannah Silba and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor, Lindsay DeSelms. People begin to achieve excellence when they believe in what they do. Lee Moore Freed of Adafruit Industries earned her master's degree in electrical engineering and computer science. Her company sells do-it-yourself electronic kits. For every kit she sells, she posts design files, schematics for circuit boards, and any software code needed. She welcomes people to use the information and sees it as a way to foster innovation. She believes that people want to see the world become a better place through science and engineering, and she sees this as a way of inspiring future generations. She launched her company with $10,000 that was supposed to go toward her college tuition. Today, the company ships between 150 and 200 orders a day, some of them worth thousands of dollars. 
We have a responsibility to share our talents, and that was the focus of the, of the members and advisors of the North Central Region who shared their talents by increasing visibility both within and outside of the organization and demonstrating the core values that we stand for in FBLA. Tonight, I am pleased to congratulate all the leaders of the North Central Region. From Illinois, State President Kelsey Lober and outstanding local chapter advisor Chris Hoster. From Indiana, State President Alex Schroeder and outstanding local chapter advisor Andrea Wedek. From Iowa, State Vice President Emily Bray and outstanding local chapter advisor Susan Seifer. From Missouri, State President Aubrey Nelson and outstanding local chapter advisor Barbara Mason. From Ohio, State President Nico Singarelli and outstanding local chapter advisor Jeff Modinaro. From Wisconsin, State President Cheyenne Mackay and outstanding local advisor Cindy Teal standing in for Ms. Teal, Stephanie Jansen. What an impressive display of leadership in our association. Thank you for making this an excellent year for FBLA, helping us reach new heights with our membership goals and embracing programs like the Chapter Challenge and the BAAs that provided measurable results for our success. Thank you for all the important roles you play in carrying on the legacy of excellence in FBLA. On behalf of the National Officer Team, good luck in your competitions and campaigns, and enjoy your time here in Nashville. For more than 200 years, our flag has stood for excellence and has served as a symbol of strength and unity. Tonight, we honor all that our flag represents and we pay tribute to the men and women who have served us so bravely. Please stand for the singing of our national anthem by Carly Bauer from Nebraska. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting seated. Helping our association put excellence in action are the members of our National Board of Directors. Their leadership and guidance are what allow us to continue bringing business and education together. We are grateful to have several board members here in the audience with us tonight. As we turn our attention to the screens, please help me in thanking our National Board of Directors. We appreciate the leadership of the Board of Directors Chair, representing the Southern Region from Georgia, Monty Rhodes. Serving as Chair-Elect and representing the Mountain Plains Region from Nebraska, Ted Harshberger. From KPMG LLP, serving as the Business and Industry Representative, Zulima Garcia. Serving the North Central Region from Missouri, Lisa Hofstetter. 
and from Illinois, Kelly Wilkerson. Representing the southern region from Arkansas, Karen Heslip. Representing the western region from Oregon, Chris Pendleton. And from Arizona, Shea Padilla. Next are the three division presidents, FBLA National President Cole Simmons from Georgia. PBL National President Donnie Iorio from South Carolina. And Professional Division National President David Jones from Maryland. Your ex officio non-voting members of the Board of Directors are from Florida, past chair Tammy Skinner. And FBLA PBL President and CEO Gene Buckley. Tonight, we recognize one board member who has completed her term of service on the board. As she receives her recognition plaque, please show your appreciation for past chair, Tammy Skinner from Florida. Thank you to the members of the FBLA PBL Board of Directors. It has been said that excellence starts at the top. We are so fortunate to have a great leader guiding our association to excellence. She, has, she leads by example, putting her words into action. She has proven her success with our increased membership and sponsorships. Here to welcome us to Nashville and the National Leadership Conference is our President and CEO, Gene Buckley. FBLA. Welcome to Nashville and the 2014 National Leadership Conference. What a perfect city to celebrate your record-breaking performance this year. First, let me kick off the evening by announcing that you shattered a major record. This is now our largest NLC ever with over 10,000 members and advisors. <laughs> outstanding examples of your excellence in action. It began with your focus on membership. 27 states increased members this year. Alabama, Georgia, Wisconsin, each added over 500 members. And this is just amazing, adding 1,422 members this year. Thank you, Arizona. And the, and, the, and the best news, and the best news is FBLA, you now stand strong with a membership increase this year at over 204,000 members. Congratulations. excellence by creating news and headlines throughout the country. Like Jacob Gattinger and the state officers from Connecticut and New Jersey, who are featured at the NBC Education Nation in New York City. South Carolina and Florida meeting with lawmakers about the value of FBLA in our schools and communities. And Cole Simmons on national TV winning over $20,000 on Family Feud. Let's take a look. That is so awesome. That is great. And then, FBLA, you inspired us with your community to service. We had Colorado partnering with the American Legion to help wounded warriors and local veterans. Jersey Shore. Jersey Shore supporting Donate Life Pennsylvania, their state project. To date, Pennsylvania has raised over $41,000 to support organ donation and Westmore in California, organizing an anti-bullying program with a powerful message, Speak for the Silent. 
It is your generous community service and outstanding achievements that once again captured the attention of the business community. I am pleased to announce that we have 15 new business sponsors this year, and we welcome back 45 companies that continue to support our association. Together, they will be providing the trophies and cash awards at our closing session Wednesday evening. I am, I am also I am also thrilled to announce that we have every single FBLA and PBL competitive event sponsored again this year, breaking another record and raising over $245,000 in corporate support. And, and that is not all. We have one more special announcement. Our new partner, Everett Colleges, Institutes, and Universities, has given us a $10,000 contribution to provide a $100 cash award to every who's who's recipient. Congratulations to them. So, F so FBLA, this has indeed been a record-breaking year. As we celebrate this past year, we look forward to next year with a great new theme, Step Up to the Challenge and a dynamic poster designed by our very own Samantha Craigle from Linmar High School in Iowa. We are challenging every local chapter to step up and help grow our association and see the tremendous impact you will have on the future of FBLA. So congratulations on an outstanding year and have a wonderful conference. Thank you, Ms. Buckley, for continuing to put excellence in action. We are proud of our long-standing partnership with the March of Dimes. For nearly 40 years, FBLA PBL has consistently ranked as the top fundraising partner for the organization, raising over $15 million. In just a few moments, we will name this year's top fundraisers, as well as our March of Dimes grants recipients. We ask that a representative from the following chapters please send a representative to the holding area at the right side of the stage. Armorell Junior High School in Arkansas, Bobble High School in Washington, Brooklyn High School in Arkansas, Morrow High School in Georgia, Overhills High School in North Carolina, Sylacauga High School in Alabama, and Walk Hill Valley High School in New Jersey. We also ask one representative from the following states, please come to the holding area. Alabama, Arkansas, Georgia, Nevada, New Jersey, Oregon, and Puerto Rico. Would the following scholarship recipient also report to the holding area to the right of the stage. Hannah Brook Roll, Georgia. Here to share more about the March of Dimes and how your fundraising efforts are making a difference is National Youth Leadership Development Manager, Lisa Lazari. Good evening, future business leaders of America. It is it is such an honor to be with you here at, the, at this year's National Leadership Conference. And on behalf of the March of Dimes, I want to thank you for your commitment to stronger, healthier babies. We are so proud of our partnership with FBLA PBL and celebrate with you today the 42 years of success together. From lobbying with us on Capitol Hill to educating countless students and professionals on the impacts of prematurity to raising an incredible $467,000 this year, adding to the more than 15 million raised throughout our partnership. Congratulations. The work that you do as FBLA members helps the March of Dimes reach its mission, the day every baby is born healthy. 
You, are make, you make a difference. You are making a change. The rate of preterm birth has dropped in the last couple of years thanks to you. But we can't stop now. We have more work to do. The statistics are staggering. Globally, 15 million babies are born too soon. And over 1 million babies do not make it to their first birthday. One in nine babies are born prematurely in the United States each year. And many of those who survive face serious health problems. Our babies deserve better. These babies are born to be great, born to be leaders, born to be future FBLA members. It's our job to help. Together, the funds your chapter raise help find answers to problems that threaten babies and support programs all over the country to help moms have healthy, full-term babies. By educating your peers and communities about the serious and costly problem of preterm birth, you are helping us reach a day when all babies are born healthy. And by making your voice heard on Capitol Hill and in state houses across the country, you have helped us in passing important legislation for babies everywhere. This year, more than ever, it is important for you to use your business skills to help all babies be born healthy. Join us in November to spread the word on World Prematurity Day, November 17th. Get your entire chapter to wear purple. Just download our guide for more ideas. Then continue your chapter involvement with our signature fundraising event, March for Babies, next spring. And throughout the entire year, advocate for babies and families in your community and throughout the country. Learn more about how you can get involved and how you can lead your chapter to make a difference in the lives of babies and families. Stop by our booth to pick up a copy of our March of Dimes guide for FBLA. Participate in our workshops and learn key strategies for a successful year. And advisors, be sure to join us for an exclusive workshop just for you to discover how to lead your membership to success for babies this year. And finally, celebrate all that you have done this year at the annual Mini March for Babies event on Tuesday night at 5.30 p.m. in Delta Ballroom Lobby B. If every person here participated and donated just $5, we could raise $40,000 just this week, making FBLA PBL's fundraising total more than $500,000 for the year. Can you help us do it? As future business leaders, you have the unique opportunity to be a champion for all babies. Thank you again for everything you do to make a difference in the lives of babies and families everywhere. Thank you, Lisa. We are proud to join the March of Dimes in the fight against premature birth and to continue supporting research and programs to help babies across the country get a healthy start. Tonight, we recognize our local and state chapter winners of the March of Dimes Awards and Grants. We begin with the top five local chapters, raising the most money for the March of Dimes. Stepping forward in fifth place, we congratulate Armorell Junior High School in Arkansas. Fourth place, Sylacauga High School in Alabama. Third place, Bobble High School in Washington. Second place, Brooklyn High School in Arkansas. And in first place, Wallkill Valley High School in New Jersey. Next, we recognize the top five state chapters raising the most money for the March of Dimes. In fifth place, we congratulate Georgia. Fourth place, New Jersey. Third place, Arkansas. Second place, Puerto Rico. 
And in first place, raising $53,268, we congratulate Alabama! We also recognize our local and state chapters that participated in the March of Dimes grant program. Stepping forward to collect their March of Dimes grant, we congratulate Morrow High School in Georgia. Next, we recognize Overhills High School in North Carolina. Congratulations to our next grant recipient, Bothell High School in Washington. Next, we congratulate Walkill Valley Regional High School in New Jersey. Two state chapters are receiving grants this evening. Congratulations to Oregon FBLA. And congratulations to Nevada FBLA. Thank you to the March of Dimes for your continued partnership. And thank you to all of the chapters that contributed to the March of Dimes and its mission. Next, we recognize our scholarship recipients, beginning with the FBLA Distinguished Business Leader Scholarship. Each will receive $500 for this recognition and an additional $500 upon joining PBL. This scholarship recognizes outstanding FBLA members for their activity and involvement in the association. Stepping forward to receive her scholarship, we congratulate Kennedy Reynolds from Maud High School in Oklahoma. Congratulations to Anel Molina from Overhills High School in North Carolina. We also congratulate Kimberly Clark from Canton R5 High School in Missouri. Next, we honor Carolyn Kalinowski from Warren Township High School in Illinois. And congratulations to Sarah Walker from Stewart County High School in Tennessee. Next is the National Technical Honor Society Scholarship, eligible to any dues-paying member who is also a member in good standing of the NTHS. We appreciate Kate Allen for being with us today. Not in attendance, we congratulate Hannah Brooke Roll from Hiram High School in Georgia. One deserving member has earned a full tuition scholarship from Johnson & Wales University. Assisting with the presentation of awards from Johnson & Wales University is Stephen Shanks. Stepping forward to receive her full tuition scholarship, we congratulate Rachel Ford from Salem Springs High School in Arkansas. Next, we recognize the recipients of the New America Scholarship. This $250 scholarship is available to members who have completed the America level of the Business Achievement Awards. Stepping forward as our first America Scholarship recipient, we congratulate Isabel Jin from California. We also congratulate Nick Western from Virginia. Congratulations to these scholarship recipients. Our next award honors this year's Business Persons of the Year.
Stepping forward is California FBLA's Business Person of the Year, Stacy Snowball. Ms. Snowball is the Vice President and Branch Manager of Union Bank Yorba Linda Branch. Let's congratulate Business Person of the Year, Stacy Snowball. Next is Illinois FBLA's Business Person of the Year, Louis Sharp. Mr. Sharp is the president and owner of Sharp Auto Body and Sharp Towing. Congratulations to Business Person of the Year, Louis Sharp. Stepping forward is Iowa FBLA's Business Person of the Year, Carol Sidoris. Ms. Sidoris is the director of residential services at Discovery Living. We congratulate Business Person of the Year, Carol Sidoris. Next, we recognize Kansas FBLA's Business Person of the Year, Douglas Lambert. Mr. Lambert is the CEO and President of Lambert Vet Supply. Let's hear it for Business Person of the Year, Douglas Lambert. Next, we congratulate Maryland FBLA's Business Person of the Year, Laura Ankub. Ms. Ankub is the Senior Operations Manager of the Men's Warehouse. Congratulations to Business Person of the Year, Laura Ankub. Next, we recognize Missouri FBLA's Business Person of the Year, Chuck Mason. Mr. Mason is the Product Manager of Orschland Farm and Home. Congratulations to Business Person of the Year, Chuck Mason. Let's recognize New Jersey FBLA's Business Person of the Year, Robert Helm. Mr. Helm is the Manager of Morristown Here USA. Congratulations to Business Person of the Year, Robert Helm. Next, we recognize Tennessee FBLA's per Business Person of the Year, Elaine Markram. Ms. Markram is the Assistant Manager of R&T Real Estate. Congratulations to Business Person of the Year, Elaine Markram. Let's recognize Washington FBLA's Business Person of the Year, Sandra Mangan. Ms. Mangan is the Senior Compliance Technical Administrator of Russell Investments. Congratulations to Business Person of the Year, Sandra Mangan. We recognize South Carolina FBLA's Business Person of the Year, Paige Scott. Ms. Scott is Technology Services Consultant for Hewitt Packard. Congratulations to Business Person of the Year, Paige Scott. Next, recognizing Wisconsin's Business Person of the Year, Soon Yen. Ms. Nian is Executive Vice President at Union Bank of Blair. Congratulations to Business Person of the Year, Soon Yen. Thank you once again to all of our Business Persons of the Year. Throughout the conference, there will be several opportunities to meet your national offers by the photo booth. Meet and greet times are posted by the conference registration desk. Are you a class of 2014 senior? Start your college and professional network at the Senior Networking Session on Monday, June 30th from 1.30 to 2.15 p.m. in Tennessee Ballroom E. Do you want to see your advisor recognized on screen during the Awards of Excellence program? Email photos of your advisor to flashpack at pdcproductions.com and remember to tag all of your conference photos with hashtag NLC2014. Be sure to visit the exhibits and campaign booths in Presidential Ballroom C through D where you can learn more about our national officer candidates and gain valuable information from our vendors and exhibitors. Take time to visit the Marketplace in Presidential Ballroom B to get your customized FBLA apparel and National Leadership Conference t-shirt. Hours are from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. tomorrow and Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. On Tuesday, be sure to visit the silent auction held from 9.30 to 4 p.m. in the Delta B lobby. A variety of items, including gift baskets and hotel packages, will be available for bidding. The proceeds go towards sponsoring competitive events. We also encourage you to join us Tuesday from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. for the March for Babies. 
Please meet us in the Delta B lobby as we show our support for the March of Dimes and continue working together for stronger, healthier babies. Remember to bring your $5 donation and your walking shoes. At a Wednesday's Awards of Excellence ceremony, we look forward to congratulating our national champions on stage. Please remember that dress codes rules do apply for all those coming to accept awards. As a reminder for those states who who winners, there will be a brief rehearsal immediately following this session. Who's who's winners should report to the front of the stage after tonight's opening session for a brief rehearsal. Tonight's keynote speaker is a woman of many talents. She is the owner of KUU Productions with, with clients that include HBO, BET, and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. She has owned, operated, and designed for her custom-made jewelry company, Bean Pie, since 2005. Her clients range from A-list celebrities to the everyday woman desiring a bold look. In 2007, she co-founded the New York-based woman nonprofit WEEN, Woman and Entertaining Network. Today, WEEN is 40,000 members strong. She is truly a survivor, and in 2012, she went on the wildest adventure of her lifetime and was the runner-up on Survivor One World. Please help me welcome Sabrina Thompson. What's up, FBLA? Hey, everybody. Are y'all ready? Y'all backstage, y'all sound like this is the World Cup out here. It sounds amazing. Okay. So, this is excellence in action, right? Are y'all playing with me? This is excellence in action, right? Good. Okay. Some of you all will be joining me on stage. You may not know who you are, so pay attention. Okay, in a few seconds, you will see an image behind me. Once you see the image, you just yell out some of the first things that come to mind. But we're only gonna start with this section first. You ready? Okay, I heard some of these, shoes, style, sports, maybe basketball, and say it together, what is their slogan? Okay, just do it. This middle section right here, you ready? Only the middle section. Okay, you think of technology, you think of quality, Steve Jobs, innovation. Okay, don't fail me, last section over here, you ready? If you don't know this one, we're gonna have issues. Well, actually, forward thinking is actually one of their slogans, okay? A lot of people don't know that. You ready? Okay, you think of fun, fast food, maybe mystery meat? I don't know, we're on a McDonald's and we can all say it together, what is their slogan? I'm loving it. Okay, you see how easy it was for you to think of these brands? You, it was just, you, you just said it, it was almost like a reaction, right? Okay, so I want to see how good you are at a certain question. Two people are about to join me on stage. Right now, there are 52 people out in the audience that have a playing card underneath their seat. Everyone check underneath their seats. If you have a playing card, just hold on to it, okay? It's only 52 of you all that have a card. When you see the card behind me, you have this card, come meet me at the front on this side really, really quickly, go. I'm looking for the eight of hearts and the seven of spades. That's meet me, come on up. Give them a hand clap. Come on up, sir. Where's my other person? Come on up. Where's my other person? If I don't see them in a second, I'm just going to pick someone. Okay, here, here. come on. Wonderful. Okay, what's your name, sir? Adam Carlisle. Adam, where are you from? Uh, Butte Falls, Oregon. Oh, Oregon. 
Okay, and your name? Paula Davis. Paula, where are you from? Georgia. Georgia. Okay. These two souls are very, very brave. There's no right or wrong answer to this. I'm about to give you an object that is behind my back. I just need for you to think for a couple of seconds what the question is, and then I, you can answer it, okay? Okay, these are hand mirrors. So take about five seconds and tell me, who do you see? Who do you see? What do you see? You can just project and... Me, myself, and I. <laughs> A very proud FBLA member. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you, that's it. Okay, so that's really, an, it sounds like an easy question, but it's actually a pretty hard question if you think about it. You see how quickly we were able to think of the brands, McDonald's, Apple, and Nike. But sometimes when someone asks you, who are you, what do you stand for, we kind of get quiet, or we're not as quick to answer. So today, I'm gonna to take you through three short stories. All of these stories are true, and you will help me tell the story. So still hang on to those playing cards. You may get called up here in a second. All right, so who you are determines your leadership qualities. When you think of a leader, a good leader should possess great people skills. Are you able to talk to the homeless person in the street and then turn around and talk to President Obama? Can you fit into the container that you're placed into? Second quality, character. Do you have integrity? And last but not least, one of my favorite things to talk about, are you a good decision maker? It's one thing to think something. It's another thing to put action into it. As far as deciding something, the three C's, you will see this over and over and over again tonight. Clarity, do you have clarity? Are you thinking clear when you make a decision? Are you concerned not only about yourself, but others? And last but not least, do you have the courage to actually say, make, and follow through your decision? Do you have the courage? Okay, the first story we're gonna talk about today, you're gonna help me. So look at your playing cards. Anyone that has a nine of clubs, hearts, Spades, diamonds, come on up really, 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 really quickly. Up on this side. I should have four people coming. I only see one. Okay, if not, I'm just gonna grab three people. Come on up, come on up, I need two other people. I need two more people. Yes, ma'am. Thank I love this. One more person. One more person. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, slide over a little bit, guys. All right, so in my hand. In my hand, I have four cards. They have a word on them. Each of these young people will say the word on the card. They are describing a story I'm about to tell you. However, I want to see within five seconds, can you think of the general story? So just say the word. Food. Scholarship. Pressure. Track and field. Okay. You can come and think together, come together. What do you think the story is about? Okay. <laughs> okay, so you do track and field. You're trying to get a scholarship, so you're under pressure, but you really need food. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. Well, you can hang on to it. They came a little close, but not quite that close. So ladies and gentlemen, this is me at the age of 10. I won my very first track and field championship at the age of 10 all the way through 
high school, middle school, elementary, you name it, I was a winner. By the time I was a junior in high school, I had 58 Division I full scholarships on the table. From UCLA to University of Texas to Tennessee, you name it, it was on the table. So I made my way to LSU, which was, which was one of the top schools in the country for track and field. I got there, everything was great. A couple of months into training, every Tuesday, the coaches said, you're gonna have to come and report and weigh in. So I said, okay, the lighter you are around the track, the faster you'll go, I get it. So I weighed in, stepped on the scale, the coach looks straight into my eyes and says, if you don't lose two and a half pounds by next Tuesday, we're snatching your 40 some odd thousand dollar scholarship. I am young, I am scared, I am 18. I come from a past where everything I touched, I won. So to make a phone call home to my mom and dad to say, hey, I'm having a problem with weight issues, was not cool. And I was terrified. Next day, I went to class. My professor at the time was a really young, petite, really cute woman. She was 28 years old, and she was telling us how she used to be a bodybuilder. And much like boxers, they have to stay in their own bracket of weight. She said for seven years, she was addicted to laxatives. And that's how she maintained her weight. Now, this lady was 28. She was 5'7", now she's 5'6". She has osteoporosis, and she has holes in her intestines. At that moment, I got up, ran out of class, busted out crying. For months, I had been abusing laxatives, and I did not know that was a form of an eating disorder. I just knew whatever food I consumed, I needed to get it out of my system by the time I weighed in next Tuesday. I ran out of the classroom, called my father. I said, if you don't get me out of here and help me transfer, I will die. So I made a transfer from LSU to UNC Chapel Hill. It was one of the best decisions of my life. And at that time, I was very clear on what I would and would not do for track and field. I was concerned not only about my health, but what I was going to do to keep my legacy going. And eating a disorder, eating disorders were not part of my legacy. And last but not least, I had the courage to walk away from a full scholarship. I transferred and still got a full scholarship at UNC, but I had the courage to leave. So today, some of you all might be in a situation where it's, it's, not, it's not too cool to speak up. You may be in a business meeting and you really don't like what's going down. But do you have the courage to stand up and speak? All right, the next story. Who has a three of clubs? Diamonds. Come on up. I'm just going to ask you to predict the story. Come on up. If not, I'm just going to start picking people. Thank you. I see you. Wonderful. This one's a little interesting. Come on up. I see you. Come on up. Oh. It's okay, come on up. All right, how are you guys doing? All right, you get a card? You two read it out together. Yes, and you two can, you three can share a card. All right, we're gonna go down. Listen carefully to this one, all right? Say it together. Murder. Murder. Ratings. Exploit. News. So ratings, exploit, murder, and news Talk for five seconds. What do you think this story is about? Ratings, exploit, news, and murder. Okay, what are you coming up with, sir? It's about how like news stations exploit people's murders like Trayvon Martins for better ratings and to get people interested in the news. Okay. Thank you, you can exit off that way. You can exit off that way. All right, they pretty much got it correct. Now, ladies and gentlemen, after I graduated from UNC, I worked in television. Worked for a lot of crazy talk shows, but then I transitioned into news. I worked for Court TV, which is now called True TV. 
We handled a lot of cases, like you see the Lindsay Lohan case, the Michael Jackson case, Kobe Bryant, you name it, okay? The turning point for me, now every day I would cover homicides, molestations, kidnaps, you, you name it, for six years. And it took a toll on my soul. And the breaking point for me was this. One day, there was a case we had to cover in Detroit, Michigan. And unfortunately, a husband and wife had split up. They, they got divorced, and they had shared custody of the kids. And um, the mom dropped the, the kids off one day to the, to the dad's house, and she just came to pick them up at the end of the weekend. She keeps knocking at the door, knocking at the door, no answer. After a couple of minutes, the husband comes to the door, the glaze over his eyes, just kind of out of it. So to make a long story short, unfortunately, this husband had taken all three of his kids, chopped them up, put them in a suitcase, and threw them out in the river. And at this point, and it's a true story, this case was now in court. I had to cover it as a, as a producer. And I'm just like, oh, wow. So my job was to get defense attorneys and prosecutors and people in the case out to talk for a live interview. And it was a rare moment where I actually got a chance to get the mom to come on television. So I called my boss back in New York. I said, hey, I'm able to get this mom. She's really fragile. What angle do you want me to talk to her about? Like, what do you think is best? This is what my boss said at the time. She said, Sabrina, I don't care. Just make her cry. I'm just like, why? Now, why do you think she asked me to make her cry? to get ratings. Unfortunately, we live in a world where when you're flipping TV, you see someone fighting or you see someone crying, what are you going to do? You're going to stop and see what's going on. I was, around, I was about 26 years of age, making a lot of money, traveling around the country, but it didn't sit well with my soul. I didn't feel proud of my job. And at that moment, I knew it was very clear to me that I had to leave. Because the concern wasn't about helping the world, it was about getting ratings. And that wasn't the legacy that I wanted to lead. That wasn't the leadership that I had all throughout high school and throughout college. And I had the courage to walk away with a lot of money on the table. And I remember going home the next week, sitting on the subway, and I looked up, and it says on, in the ad on the subway, change someone's life, become a New York City public high school teacher. The next week I applied, and then I went into and got my master's and became a high school teacher. So I knew at that point, just because I made money doesn't mean that it was right. So I had the courage to walk away. Last but not least, where are my kings at? To tell the last and final story. Kings, where are you? I see you. I see one. I see two. One more. Thank you. All right, this one's really hard. So I hope I have some very smart people up here. Come on. OK, you ready? Hold on to it. Flip it over. You, you all can read it together. You all can read it together. I like your blazer. You all read it together. Okay. All right, listen up closely. No, no food. No food. A pair of underwear. Only one. Only one pair of underwear. One million dollar prize. One million dollar prize. 39 days. Okay, what do you think this is about? Five seconds. Okay, time's up. What do you think? Was it about Survivor? Of course it was about Survivor. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, so Survivor. True story. I did not try out for Survivor. Had I seen the show before? Of course. Now, keep in mind, I told you I went to go teach high school, right? So three years, no, four years into teaching high school, I had a break. I went downstairs to the main office, checked my mailbox, 
And in my mailbox was a letter from the ed education chancellor in New York City saying, due to budget cuts, we're going to have to get rid of 6,000 cops and 4,000 teachers. And guess whose name was on the list? Yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, really? OK, did I just really leave my job in television that paid a lot of money to become a teacher to get laid off? Like, that is isn't. So I remember folding up the letter, and I really remember just praying about it. I said, God, what do you want me to do with this? But I didn't worry for some reason. Two days later, I get an email titled TV Inquiry. So I'm thinking of some of my buddies in, in TV that still contact me for certain projects. The email went like this. Hi, Sabrina. My name is Penny. I'm the lead casting producer for the hit show Survivor. So I instantly stopped reading the email, and I'm thinking Ashton Kutcher is going to jump out of the closet. I'm thinking somebody's punking me, right? And um, it says, to make a long story short, we are 80% done casting for our next season. However, we're in need of two more women, preferably black or Hispanic. So I'm just like, what? So it turns out they had kind of already picked the two women, but the black lady they had picked Complete opposite of me. She was a professional bass fisher. She lived in Texas. This lady was like 50 years of age, okay? Why did this lady have my same exact name, Sabrina Thompson? So every time, they were, they were creating an electronic profile to send to Mark Burnett, the guru of television. Every time they Googled Sabrina Thompson, not only did they find her picture, but they found my picture. Not only did they find her bio, but they found my bio, and they started reading through my bio, and everything in my bio, in my bio from track and field, from me being class president, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th grade year, college, professional um, TV producer, small business owner, and they said, we like this girl. But they didn't have a way of contacting me. They emailed me. And after I met with them, two and a half week, weeks later, I was on the island with these people. <laughs> the wildest ride of my life. So I had to think about it. OK, do I want to be on a reality TV show? OK? Did I like the connotation behind that? But I said, you know what? This was literally put in my lap. I cannot say no to this. So it was the wildest ride of my life. So imagine spending. 39 days on an island stranded with 17 other strangers who may or may not like you, all for a million dollars with one pair of underwear. No toothbrush, no brush, no shampoo. It was very real. In order to win food, we would play different obstacle courses, like sliding down a two-story slide that would project us out in the ocean to get these big puzzle pieces. These are very heavy. You see, it takes like two and three of us just to roll it out. And then we would have to solve a puzzle. Now, some of these people on the team were leaders, some were not. And I had to be very clear on how I read people. I had to be concerned about how I was going to come across looking on TV. Because if you look at reality TV and, and TV, Women don't, you always see women fighting. And then I had another layer on top of that. I was an African-American woman, and they didn't, at the time, didn't have a really good presence on television. So I had to think about a lot of different things. But what I'm very proud of, it was men versus women. And ladies and gentlemen, the women kicked the men's butt. So for the first time in history, it was the top five finalists with all women. And then the top three, we made it to the end. We survived nine, um, 39 days. So I managed to get second place. And the lady in the middle, Kim, from Texas, won. And it was really, really a moment where that propelled everything that I had been doing in my life on a higher level. So I took the money from it, invested it, created another business, and now I run a full-time multimedia company with HBO as, as a client, BT, Verizon, Saks Fifth Avenue, Planned Parenthood, you name it. 
And I believe the reason why my, I was just successful in, on that show and also in my company now is because everything I do, I give back. There's a great quote by the late Maya Angelou that says, if you get, give. If you learn, teach. We all have something to give in here, and we all have something to learn and to teach in here. So today, I congratulate you on coming from all different parts of the country. On the start of your conference, when you start breaking up in your different workshops, make sure that you have clarity and your thoughts. Make sure when you propose different ideas that you not only can have concern about yourself, but the communities that you come from. And last but not least, I challenge you to be courageous in your actions. You're here to be leaders, and leaders are doers. Doers move, and movers are forces. So when you walk in a room, not only are you gonna give somebody a handshake, a firm handshake, not only are you gonna look someone in the eye, you're gonna be genuine, and you're gonna be a force, and you're gonna be memorable. You're gonna be unforgettable. So everything, and listen, I unfortunately can't be here the rest of the time that you're here, but I want to hear about the decisions that you all are making. So stay in contact with me here. Tell me your good news. There's a kid in one of the last conferences, he reported back to me two weeks later. He said, Ms. Thompson, I'm a sneakerhead. I sold three pair of my Jordans and started my own company. I was amazed. So I want to hear your good news. Stay in contact with me right now. Give yourselves a hand clap for just arriving here and being present. I want to thank you for inviting me. Have fun the rest of the time you're at conference. God bless. Thank you, Sabrina, for inspiring us to achieve excellence. It is now time for us to begin the National Candidate Campaign Rally and introduce the candidates running for next year's National Leadership Team. Let's begin by meeting your candidates for National Parliamentarian and Regional Vice President. First are your candidates for National Parliamentarian. Stepping forward is Alexandra Carter from North Carolina. Blaine Durbany from Louisiana. Adam Hand from Missouri. Janice Eim from Kentucky. Ronnie Mavram from California. Harold Patel from Washington. And Michaela Shelton from Louisiana. Good luck to our candidates for National Parliamentarian. Next are your candidates for Regional Vice President. We begin with your candidates for Western Region Vice President. From Washington, Michaela Branch. From Nevada, Robert Biuno. From Utah, Brandon Sway. From Oregon, Joshua Dimmick. And from Arizona, Ian Mullane. Let's meet your Southern Region candidates. From Georgia, Nick Crawford. From North Carolina, Ruchi Chalabancha. From Louisiana, Lauren James. And from South Carolina, Alyssa Koziarski. Greet the candidate for the Office of North Central Region Vice President. From Missouri, Madison Harris. Let's meet the candidates for the Office of Mountain Plains Region Vice President. From North Dakota, Jordan Bolovich. 
from Nebraska, Trevor Lockman. And from Kansas, Sarah Niedery. Next are the candidates for Eastern Region Vice President. From New York, Sabrina Sabet. And from Connecticut, Maxwell Skalski. Good luck to these candidates. Now, back to your national president for some important campaign information. Best of luck to all of our candidates for Region Vice President and National Parliamentarian. In tomorrow's regional campaign rallies, you will hear the speeches for the Office of Region Vice President. Be sure to check your program for the time and location of your regional campaign rally. And now for the offices of President, Secretary, and Treasurer. Each candidate will speak from this lectern or use a handheld microphone. So that everyone in the room can hear, we ask that you speak directly into the microphone. Each candidate will have two minutes for his or her speech. Adam Nisanoff, your national parliamentarian, will be seated in the front row and will stand when 15 seconds are remaining. When your time is up, he will stand and call time. Then you must finish. If I wrap the gavel, you must be seated. The campaign speeches will be given in the order of treasurer, secretary, and president. For each office, the candidates will be introduced alphabetically by last name. For the campaign speeches, we begin with the Office of National Treasurer. The National Treasurer is responsible for keeping accurate records of all national officer travel, as well as promoting the goals of the association. Please welcome your candidate from Illinois, Ruben Torres. Hello, my name is Ruben Torres and I'm running for the Office of National Treasurer. This past year, I had the honor of serving as Illinois FBLA Vice President and in addition was appointed to the North Central Region Executive Board. I have immensely enjoyed my involvement in this organization and wish to make others aware of the benefits that can be acquired through membership. That being said, I chose not to run for state office this year because I believe the Office of National Treasurer deserves a candidate's undivided attention. I have always found money management intriguing. I have even taken seven business courses to increase my knowledge in this sector. Some of these classes include Personal Finance, Accounting One, and Honors Accounting Two. As National Treasurer, I would make it my duty to assist the National Office in keeping accurate records of National Officer Travel Expenses and Disbursements. At the, at the 2015 National Leadership Conference in my home state of Illinois, I would, I would present an annual financial report regarding the National Officer Team to our membership. I believe it is important for our members to become aware of money management because we will all be responsible for our expenses as we transition from school to work. I love FBLA and the opportunities that we gain from it. If elected, I can guarantee that I will serve this organization to the best of my ability. I sincerely hope you all consider voting for me for National Treasurer. Thank you for your time and good luck in your events. There are four candidates for the Office of National Secretary. Our first candidate is Margaret Huffines from Kentucky. Good evening, FBLA. How are we doing tonight? I can't hear you. FBLA, how are we doing tonight? Awesome. My name is Margaret Huffines, and I stand before you tonight asking for your vote for National Secretary. FBLA has been in my blood since the beginning. My grandma, who passed away a few weeks ago, was a part of this organization for 30 years, has been a tremendous influence in my life, and has instilled her passion for FBLA in me. 
I plan to continue on her legacy by empowering this organization through unity, opportunity, and ingenuity. A vote for unity. Together, we can raise our membership levels once again by mentoring our middle-level students. Through a mentorship day, we will inspire non-members to join FBLA, as well as our middle-level members to continue in this groundbreaking organization, and we will show them what FBLA is all about. A vote for opportunity. By increasing corporate sponsorship for both the advancement of our organization and the personal career goals of our members. A vote for ingenuity. Through the creation of a secretary training video designed for state and local secretaries, we can increase meeting efficiency by equipping them with the tools they may need. I believe in this organization, and I look around the room and I see the potential that will bring about the growth we all hope for, are ready for, and advocate for. I'm here in front of you to ask for a real vote, not for me or you, but for all 204,000 of us. So believe in progress like I do and vote Margaret Huffines for your national secretary. Thank you. We will next hear from the candidate Annika Mullaney from Florida. Hello? Yeah, can you give me a minute? I'm just a little busy right now. Sorry, everyone. That was my future calling. Wow. It is an honor to stand in front of such a distinguished and good-looking group of the nation's future leaders. My name is Annika Mullaney, and I am running for FBLA National Secretary. Now, I may not look like your typical business leader or politician at five feet tall, but let me assure you, I am five feet pure business. I began my journey in FBLA in seventh grade and went on in high school to become a three-term state officer for Florida FBLA, including serving two terms as state secretary. I also have experience on the national level as a member of the FBLA National Secretary's Council. There's a fine line between the ambitious and the unrealistic. I want to show you my ambitious goals for FBLA. Imagine a forum where you can have the opportunity to be a published writer, where you can get ideas from the success of others. I want all leadership levels of FBLA to stay connected so we can all keep track of each other's success. My top priority is better connecting with members through a widely disseminated secretary's newsletter, which shares networking tips and provides a communication and support platform for members to showcase their skills. I also believe that awareness is crucial. When our future dials our phone numbers, it wants to hear more than just, yes, I'm an FBLA member. A lot of us simply don't know about all the opportunities that are available to us. I'll get the phones ringing so you can answer the calls that best fit you. Thank you so much for your support, and I look forward to speaking with you at my booth. Your future is calling. Answer the call and vote Annika Mullaney for National Secretary. Thank you. Our next candidate is Nick Rincon from Arkansas. Those who don't throw the dice can never expect to roll a six. Hello, FBLA members and advisors. I'm Nick Rincon. When I first joined FBLA, I could have never imagined I'd be standing here today on the national stage asking you all to elect me for your national secretary. Serving on the local, district, state, and even national levels, I've come to realize I can do great things to help FBLA grow. If elected national secretary, I've created goals not only to expand membership, but increase member involvement in FBLA as well. Next year, I plan to set up and utilize an interactive forum to increase communications between local chapter members and the National Center. This forum would increase communication between local chapter members and the National Center. Members could ask questions, leave feedback, give suggestions, and even have a timely response from a national officer. Another way to raise the stakes in communications is through a National Secretary's email blast. Using the National Secretary's Council, a monthly email blast will be sent out to members and advisors signed up to receive them. 
These email blasts would include an update from the National Secretary's office. As National Secretary, I would play the winning hand by increasing interest and involvement in the national programs. The national programs are great tools for chapters to participate in and become involved. However, we can utilize them to a larger extent. I plan, through the use of social media and networking, to increase interest and participation in the national programs so that every chapter will strive to complete them. If you bet on reliability, if you bet on experience, if you bet on dedication, you will hit the jackpot. Bet on Nick Rincon for National Secretary. Thank you. Our final candidate is Nicholas Smith from Alabama. It is time to step up to the challenge, and I am here just in the nick of time to help FBLA continue to move towards success. My name is Nicholas Smith, and I want to be your National Secretary. If there's one thing I have learned being an Alabama FBLA chapter and two-term state officer, is that success doesn't happen alone. The officer teams I've been fortunate enough to have been a part of have all been successful due to a few things. We communicated and collaborated as a team. We worked towards the nine goals of FBLA PBL, and we kept education, service, and progress in our minds. First, I would like to create a professional division membership database. To do this, I'll work with the professional division officers. This database will serve as a network for professional division officers and members to network with high school members. Just imagine the mentoring possibilities, the assistance in preparing for competitive events, or even the opportunity to gain work experience while in high school. Second, let's continue the encouragement of the chapter challenge. By encouraging the chapter challenge, we will continue to recruit new members, but also we will keep our current members active and involved. Finally, I want to see the national team collaborate and continue to work towards promoting the March of Dimes in the national programs. If we do this, we will keep we will keep FBLA one of the top contributing organizations to the March of Dimes. We have an opportunity to not only be part of an organization that prepares us for our careers in business, but it also prepares us to be empowered leaders that can and are willing to make a difference. This is our time, future business leaders of America, and I am confident that as your National Secretary, I'm ready to step up to the challenge my name is Nicholas Smith, and I'm here just in the nick of time to help us continue our success together. Your candidates for national president understand that the responsibilities of this office include presiding over all national executive council meetings and promoting the goals of the association, as well as the interests of the membership. There are two candidates for this position. We will first hear from Rohan Agarwal from Iowa. Good evening, future business leaders of America. My name is Rohan Agarwal, and I'm running to be your next national president. During my time in this organization, I've had the honor of serving as a three-term state officer, including two terms as the Iowa state president. This last year, I also served as the National North Central Region Vice President. During my time as a national officer, the North Central Region increased its membership by 7% and Iowa by 10%. Both numbers more than triple the national average for membership growth. After this success at the state and national level, it's time we continue with this leadership. It's time we roll on with Rohan for national president. As your national president, I would have three main goals. First, to create a new Ask the Expert program to help connect business professionals to each and every chapter and member in the country, a way to help them prepare for competitive events, participate in internships, and experience the business world firsthand. Next, I plan on creating a new national forum to help members connect with each other, share ideas, and receive updates from the national officer team. And third, I plan on increasing membership by expanding FBLA into states that do not currently have an FBLA presence, something I have experienced doing this last year in the North Central region. FBLA, it's time for us to move forward as an organization as we strive to reach new heights. 
As your national president, I would work tirelessly to take us there. Today, I ask you for your support as we make this a reality. Let's roll on with Rohan for national president. Thank you. Our final candidate for president is Sam Kessler from Pennsylvania. As Dr. Seuss once said, the more that you learn, the more places you'll go. My name's Sam Kessler, and I'd like to be your next national president because I'm passionate about FBLA, an organization dedicated to putting the quote that you just heard into action by giving us the skills that we need to be successful. I've spent my entire high school career working my way through the ranks of this organization to become a four-time local officer two-time state officer and the state president of PA's over 13,000 members for no reason other than my commitment in the philosophy of FBLA and my commitment to building on its past success. So how do I plan to do this on a national level? As your national president, I'll work to promote a global entrepreneurial mindset across our organization, preparing us for an increasingly international economy. I hold firmly to the belief that FBLA should prepare us to become the business leaders of tomorrow by supporting our efforts and giving us the skills to be the business people of today. I plan to organize fun but valuable new events like Shark Tanks and one-on-one -on -one workshops with business professionals, as well as internationally focused workshops and increased communication and collaboration with our global branches. Additionally, I'm excited to implement innovative new programs in order to ensure that all of our voices are being heard on a national level. So again, in the words of Dr. Seuss, I meant what I said, and I said what I meant. If you'd like to elect a national president who is focused on providing us with skills for today, as well as for our futures, even beyond the realm of business, and who has the experience and determination to put excellence in action, please remember to vote Sam I Am for your national president. Good luck to all of our candidates running for office. On Tuesday, July 1st, beginning at 8 a.m. in Delta Ballroom D, there will be a question and answer session for the candidates for national president, secretary, and treasurer. Although anyone can attend this session, only state voting delegates and state presidents may ask questions. Your national officer team extends our best wishes to everyone competing in an event. We look forward to seeing several of you on stage at Wednesday evening's Awards of Excellence program. Enjoy your time here in Nashville at this National Leadership Conference. Our opening session and candidate campaign rally is now adjourned.